Hello everyone and welcome to the latest episode of the Nurtured by Nature podcast. Today I'm delighted to be joined in conversation by the lovely Lindsay Death. Lindsay is the owner of Dorset Forest Bathing and has a passion for making the natural world accessible and enjoyable for everyone. During this inspiring episode we dived into the fascinating science-based practice of forest bathing that originated in Japan. And no, you don't need a swimsuit to try it for yourself. I make no secret of my love of trees, but I was fascinated to learn of the myriad of benefits to our health and well-being that we experience when we spend time amongst these beautiful beings. With stories of her children and her own childhood, Lindsay importantly reminds us to approach nature with a sense of awe and childlike wonder and enthusiasm, while sharing some simple forest bathing techniques for us all to try. Hello everyone and welcome Lindsay and thank you so much for joining us on this episode of the Nurtured by Nature podcast. It's um, it's so lovely to have you with us and I'm excited to learn more about you. Um, I like to just start by asking my guests to share a little bit about how nature has been a part of their life, um, whether that's evolved over time and yeah, just Anything that you would like to share about how nature's been part of your journey so far? Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks so much for having me. Um, I was reflecting on this the other day because you find yourself always saying to people, like, yeah, nature's been a huge part of my life. Um, I've always felt really close to nature, but I was trying to work out what that really was. And I was very fortunate to kind of grow up um, with nature on my doorstep, a really nice outlook. (laughs) house that my parents are still in now meadows and fields rivers behind that we could explore and so that was just a playground really and I did all right at school but I was never really that motivated I just found it boring I think I wasn't that interested in school I was always sort of staring out the window and I got really into sports because for me it was just outdoors it was just so much more dynamic and interesting where things were happening and I just couldn't wait for like break time or PE lesson where I could just be outdoors and move around and it's just so much more interesting than being (laughs) indoors Um, and then I suppose my my dad's been quite a big influence Um, he got very into nature in his sort of middle age through I think it was he worked for a big corporate company and they did some sort of national trust volunteering opportunities for their staff and I think when we were quite young he took us away on some of those conservation weekends where you all muck in and eat round a fire and um, do a conservation task and that has just become a huge part of his life he's now a volunteer nature warden for a a nature reserve and you know he's big into it so I've seen him kind of you know that both my parents are quite into nature but I've seen him really blossom and so it's really nice shared interest but yeah I can kind of look back to troubled or teenage times and had this really strong sort of draw to land to the landscape to to sort of being in nature I couldn't really put my finger on it and now I've got involved in forest bathing I'm like oh that's what I was doing all along (laughs) these times when I (laughs) I just wanted to I wanted to be on my own and I wanted to be like maybe with the trees or even down on the ground and just wanted to stay there for a while yeah I think um you sort of you almost it's almost a level of companionship isn't it but it doesn't it doesn't ask anything of you does it so it's oh, um totally yeah. yeah yeah totally and I, I say to people now I think you know nature's there for you and I never quite know if they understand what I mean but you know if you've got troubles or worries you know I have found it to be extremely beneficial in terms of anxiety and things like that but you know going on a long walk and mulling things over usually will help your state of mind but yeah. um yeah throughout the seasons it can really really help you through and be quite an inspiration yeah so um so that's obviously brought you to what you do now which is um your your business is dorset forest bathing is that right is that bathing? yeah dorset forest bathing yeah so a lot of people are you know the term forest bathing is still fairly new in this country yeah. some people are very familiar with it others will 
find it a bit odd and I think some people don't even really like the term yeah. so it's not, it's not... <laughs> do you need your swimsuit I guess <laughs> yeah I you get probably that get asked that a lot I do you? get that a lot and I love oh, I actually did meet up with some forest bathing buddies on a weekend away and we went to a woodland and there was this ancient well that you could dip in so you oh. could actually bathe in the woods but um <laughs> usually it's fully clothed yeah <laughs> so um yes yeah yeah forest bathing is just absolutely wonderful it comes from um japan the idea although people have obviously been forest bathing and and finding positives from nature um for years and years but yeah in in japan they call it shinrin yoki and it's essentially slowing down in the forest woodland environment disconnecting from mobile phones and screens um, tuning into your senses and that's all very much for the benefit of your physical and emotional health so they've found some very specific health benefits so it's sort of based on science you know this is why yeah. it's good for you um, and then it goes from there really I think um, I mean that's what that was I was having a look at your website and that was one of the things I loved was um, like I don't know what's the word a lot of the sort of things around nature like they do get quite dismissive um from certain aspects of society don't they are sort of a bit woo woo or this yeah. and that and I'm I love the fact that um so much of of it was was based in nature and has this scientific research base behind it um both studies that have already been done and I think there's ongoing research isn't there that they're still conducting yeah absolutely we're still finding out so much I totally agree with you so my background's kind of conservation I worked for the RSPB for quite a long time and much more of that um, practical sort of yeah and, and I almost wanted when I discovered kind of nature for well-being oh, it was this whole new world I was like oh, wow nature's for everybody and I was perhaps excited to move away from those more traditional bird watching walks which yeah. I love but can be a little bit off-putting to some people um birdy nerdy walks we used to call them but um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um and now that I'm in the world of forest bathing, yeah, sometimes I think people kind of assume it's very much more spiritual is perhaps one word. And some people yeah. do find a spiritual connection in nature. But yeah, for me, it's very much I like to give people the, the practical benefits and then open the door, really. And some people, yeah, f- very quickly will um, sink down into, you know, they want to take their shoes off and dance around the woods and hug trees. And they're very comfortable with that. And other people are happy just knowing the science and knowing it's good for them yeah and then um, I think it's sort of I guess from what you were saying earlier it's a sort of formalization of or something that you've you've always done like you touched on like you did it sort of in your childhood unwittingly knowing that it actually was technically forest bathing but um and it's now sort of it's being more sort of structured and formalized into into that intention I suppose yeah exactly and I have come across people who um perhaps don't like the term because they're like well you're coming along calling it this brand new thing and I've been doing it for years and why do you why do you need to pay to do it or why do you need to you know that's that's absolutely fine yes when I I sort of fell into going on the course I was working for plant life um at the time and I had a really great manager and there were these um courses going on and she said oh do you want some of the other staff are going on this forest bathing course because it was directly linked to their work and it was sort of vaguely linked to my work she thought I could then pass it on on some of my events so she said oh do you want to go on this forest bathing course in Devon and I pretty much knew nothing about it at that point and it was a week (laughs) two days of absolute joy and just a revelation but yeah what I'd been feeling for years and not really being able to put my finger on was a recognized scientific (laughs) beneficial practice Um, and in Japan it's a bit more sort of formalized they'll have um, well, they've generally got, you know, quite a forested country and a quite deep connection to nature that's a little bit more inbuilt in society. Um, but of course, they're incredibly built up in these huge mega cities and very a lot of people very stressful life, um, overcrowded and pollution and what have you. But they have forest bathing parks in Tokyo. So people might do their 10 hour stressful shift. But then they might say, oh, well, I'll go and do my forest medicine. But it's in the middle of the the city. um, And they'll do this route around the park where they will perhaps sit by running water because we know running water, the sound is very soothing and calming. Then they might have particular colours in the trees that they look at. And they'll they'll sort of treat it as more of a medicine. Whereas here, 
I think we're still more seeing it as like such a luxury. If you say to your yeah. partner, I don't know, oh, um, instead of coming straight home after work, I'm going to spend an hour and a half just sitting on a park bench looking at the way the yeah. light moves <laughs> through the trees. They'll be like, how indulgent. Yeah, well, that that's the thing, isn't it? It's um, We still have this this sort of like almost sort of masculine drive in society isn't it that you have to be doing something and mm. um a little bit of of being in nature and and what you're you're talking about is actually sort of just more about being isn't it rather than and yeah, although but... there are benefits and you are sort of doing <laughs> at the same time it's it is just it's a different a mindset isn't it it's a completely different approach yeah totally and it's quite hard sometimes to to explain the benefit of that but sometimes people come on a walk they'll book on um because you know as a treat or to find out what it is um and the, the fact is they could do it themselves on their own yeah. but it's having giving themselves the time and then having somebody almost instruct them to well, and it, go, yeah yeah it holds you accountable doesn't it as well because I think you know there is this like oh you could do it on your own but then it's very easy to sort of negotiate out of that with yourself isn't it whereas if you've booked on something then you've you know you've you're committed to that you've carved out that time you'd have to say oh you know Lindsay I'm sorry I'm not coming today for yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. people often say it's given the permission as well to go you, you know and obviously I I sort of guide them through um, mindfulness exercises um, usually so they might might for example be you know 10 minutes find a tree that you're drawn to and just sit with it and that sounds a bit mad like it's it's yeah. not really anything but often people will come back and they've had these wonderful experiences yeah so that's um I mean I, I love my trees I've got um I've got a couple of horses and I've got a big ancient oak tree in their paddock and I will you know over oh. the years I've I've sat with him for hundreds oh, of hours yeah. I think probably <laughs> yeah he, he probably knows all my problems better than anyone but um it yeah. it is I guess sometimes it's just having someone as well give you the confidence to do that as well and and not yeah. feel like a, a little bit foolish as well isn't it you... yeah absolutely and I, th I think confidence is definitely a big part of it and I'd say usually on my sort of group walks it's 90 percent women okay. and although I'm quite confident go you know if I had a free day and it was a nice day I'd be quite confident to go off and explore and walk five miles on my own okay. and even stop under a tree for half an hour but I have found that a lot of women particularly, but sometimes men aren't, aren't as confident to do that. Either they don't want to be in the middle of nowhere or, you know, yeah. say we're doing, say it is a lovely summer's day and we've got mats. We might lie down under the canopy, sort of a little bit away from each other, but in a group. Yeah, some people wouldn't have, would never do that on their own in the yeah. woods because they'd be so which, worried. Someone which is, I mean, it's understandable, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, um, it's I mean I know I do wildlife photography as well and a lot of women struggle with that as well in 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 the same way that um you know going off to some of these isolated um mm. places or, or sometimes not even isolated you know just um in in a town and being on your own and um so yeah there is definitely having the companionship and support of a group and and you wouldn't have that vulnerability which I guess is also beneficial in relaxing and letting go of the stress and anxiety because you haven't got that little sort of low grade level of worry yeah yeah so it's sort of creating that space for people to be able to yeah re relax and enjoy it yeah get and, um, them get more out of it by being more relaxed um in yeah, the environment I think so. yeah. yeah I know I really enjoy sort of creating an experience or an event that perhaps people would like to do but you know wouldn't have the confidence to do on their own so one of the most recent um group walks I did was a solstice winter solstice and we were so lucky with the weather because it's really tough in the middle of winter and we've chosen this the highest point um near where I live and it's a bronze age barrow there's this clump of trees on top of the hill and the views are mm. outstanding in 360 degrees but of oh, course wow. if it's windy or raining <laughs> in the middle of winter it's awful <laughs> But we had a clear day and we watched the sunset together. So we did a nature walk, oh, read some nature amazing. poetry. And it's just providing that some people in the middle of the festive period were really craving that slowing down, having a bit of a reflection on the past year and perhaps looking ahead, but nothing too 
sort of intent. So I'm just sharing it together, really. And the sun went down and a whole load of red kites came into roost. Oh, and it was, wow. it was just oh, a really wow. lovely experience. Um, yeah. So that's quite beautiful, really. I think that's um, the thing, isn't it? I think more and more, um, there's more and more demands on our time, isn't it? And mm. it is harder and harder to carve out these sort of moments where, you, you know, you're not on your phone or you're not answering emails or, you know, um, even when you're not at work, you know, there's sort of an expectation that you are available, isn't it? To, even if it's family and friends and yeah, it's just, it's quite hard to switch off. So I guess that's, that's a, a big benefit of, of spending time in the forest is carving out that time to just disconnect from all the business busyness oh definitely and yeah. i think it works for different people in different ways so it might be that you're the type of person that needs to carve it out in your diary and you know i'm in quite a lucky stage at the moment where i've got for the first time in a while i've got little pockets of free time i've got young kids but i've got little pockets where i'm not having to work and don't have the kids not not very often but you know I'll look in my diary and go oh, that afternoon I'll spend two hours in that lovely vacation or it might just be I know most people are so busy it might be kind of adapting the working day just very tiny tweaks so even I spoke to somebody the other day who said oh I start every single morning with a barefoot walk around my garden and that's just she does it every day whatever the yeah. weather it's just probably a couple of minutes of slowing down reflection or it could be changing your route to work. So you do, you know, even five minutes isn't going to impact on your day greatly. But whether it's five minutes in a local park, noting what bird species you see or something, the more you yeah. practice, the more you um, want to do it or maybe learn a bit more, maybe learn a new bird or you can sort of filter out into joy. Yeah, your I day. think. I know I think you mentioned it earlier but you touched on it there again is um that it can be accessible to people even if you're living in the middle of a town or a city like you were saying about in in Japan like they you know just going to a park in in the middle of the city you can you can still get all the benefits you don't have to make that sort of if you're not fortunate enough to be out in the sort of rural area you don't mm. have to make that journey out just anywhere you can find a little pocket of um of green I suppose isn't it of whether that yeah, yeah yeah definitely and if you read sort of um some of the research on it I was thinking about this over lockdown for for people who were in cities and who were you know stuck in pretty much one room all day or things like that you know undoubtedly a really tough time um and it sounds really really obvious or a bit silly but you know the research on having plants in your office um you know just and I think that boomed over lockdown didn't it people having a lot more plants in their home um mm -hmm. but also looking at green and green images so if you can move your room around so you're looking out of a window um or playing you know soothing if, if you're surrounded by noise a lot and can't go out to somewhere very quiet then you know there's all those nature sounds running water wind in the trees birds on but actually i'm not very good at, at describing the science but it does stuff in our brain when we listen to certain frequencies it does calm us down and and help us feel more relaxed yeah. it's definitely worth exploring i think i think um if i i read one of your um articles and i think one of the things that you ask people to do um is to close their eyes and um so that you do sort of heighten your other senses don't you because it's mm -hmm. quite um quite often we just we get very reliant on our eyesight don't we and mm. and experiencing what we see but actually by closing your eyes you do just allow a deeper connection yeah absolutely yeah definitely you you you'll often be surprised by what you hear just a simple listening exercise sometimes I'll be walking along with a group and think oh I can't really hear you know I can't really hear much beautiful bird song at the moment shall I do the listening exercise and then we stop and five minutes eyes closed and people will say oh I heard a bee buzz right past my ear or you know, there will always be something um, that's, yeah, definitely heightened. I really struggle with it because I'm such a visual person. I'll, I'll try and have my eyes closed in the woods, but I'll always be tempted to open them <laughs> because I just love seeing so much. Yeah, but I, and I guess, but that's the thing, isn't it? Everyone's different. So um, it's, if, if you are a visual person and that's where you get enjoyment, then it's important to nurture that bit of it as well, isn't it? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. And 
nature is just such a level playing field so you know that's the thing it is for everyone um absolutely you could be kind of um, a doctor of microbiology or something or you could have you know have very little understanding of nature at all or very little knowledge but for everybody there's be different things that you're drawn to always different people will notice something else but it is really there for everybody and I think that's my message obviously I'm trying to make a business out of so far as fading so I, I I do get paid for the work I do but my message is is really for people that nature is there for you nature is free for most of us in the UK we're you know fairly lucky that there is accessible green space and, and yeah. wild green space a little bit further away and you know to utilize it but I think um I mean it is it is free but I definitely think there's there's definite benefits of um joining groups like yours and um just having someone guide you and and give you confidence and and also stretch your own boundaries as well and you know what you would consider doing I mean you might just normally walk in nature but Mm. obviously you know someone saying oh just actually shut your eyes or go and sit with a tree and it it might be things that you've not thought to try or not had the confidence to try so it's it's about expanding your awareness as well isn't it by being guided by some someone like yourself who's a a trained you're it's a the international forest therapy is that is um there's the institute of um forest bathing is one of the big um training um groups i actually trained um in devon with nature and therapy uk who i really recommend if anyone is looking to kind of find out a bit more um but but oh yeah yeah i obviously definitely believe in the 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 value of um, going with somebody, yeah, there's, there's loads of different benefits. Well, and, and even, you know, the sense of community as well, meeting like-minded people, because I think um, we we live in an age where, like, in, on many levels, we're sort of more connected than ever before, like, you know, even now, like us on Zoom and, and things, but actually that connection of community and, and shared interest is also also very important yeah that's a huge part of it yeah um so one thing is that I do a a well-being walk every Friday it's in Shaftesbury um and that's a free thing for people to come along so it's funded and that's yeah exactly like you say the community it's just a short walk we look at the seasons look at the views um but the knock-on effect of other things that have been sparked from it and friendships um it's been far more nourishing and positive than I could have imagined at the beginning and I, I don't know if you've seen in there's been a few articles and things recently about all walks okay. so or awe and how that's meant to be you know the, the key to happiness is having a sense of awe in your life and I suppose that's an aspect of forest bathing and awe is perhaps like a shared experience of something greater than ourselves so something to get it through religion or or yeah. nature okay. um so it's that sense of um, it's a bit grounding and it's feeling, you know, things are bigger than yourself, sense of perspective, um, shared feeling where everyone kind of a, a high feeling. And um, it's also quite a positive thing to sort of rationalise yourself within the world. So perhaps if you are struggling with well, lots of, of negative things going on in your life or, or anxiety or depression, it somehow helps you know a sense of awe perhaps can help you shift slightly remind you that there's yeah other things going on sometimes it things feel sort of insurmountable don't they you just it's so overwhelming you you feel like how you know how am I going to get through this and like you say like you know just being able to sort of I guess I guess that's the sort of getting out of the busyness as well isn't it you get that little bit of a step backwards and you can see sort of more of the bigger picture rather than sort of when you're lo- sort of locked into the middle of it and mm, mm. yeah yeah definitely I mean there's the as we said before there's research going on all the time and you might be aware there's kind of um starting to be more green prescriptions at doctor surgeries okay. so this is um still a fairly new thing um, it's up and running in some places. So this is the idea that um, if you are experiencing mild to moderate um, depression, anxiety, um, there could be a few other things as well. I've uh, forgotten as well. Perhaps wanting to lose weight as well, things like that. Then one option 
for your GP is to offer direct you towards a series of activities that could be kind of community gardening or health yeah, walks okay. or forest bathing walks. Um, so it starts and, and, you know, for some people, it's say you've got moderate um, period of depression. Um, it might be that medication is needed. It might be that talking therapy is needed. But for some people, um, and there's a research study going on at the moment, um, it could be that joining a group, doing an activity like forest bathing could be as beneficial. So if, hmm. I just think, you know, we know that stress is one of the biggest health problems in our modern life and any yeah. anything we can do to help tackle that even early on you might not feel that you've got any stress in your life but if you've got strategies in place like friendships and playing sports and trying to eat healthily but also doing something that helps your mental health and your relaxation then that will all help you in time when times times get tough I've certainly had somebody that's come onto my walks regularly and she said oh not just my walks but her discovering nature and forest bathing and her connection with nature she said oh it's been more beneficial to me than than pills ever have so that's yeah that's fantastic I think, I think um especially over the last sort of three years with everything that's happened with covid and the lockdowns and just the pandemic and a, a sort of the sense of loss and grief and things that people mm. have um it's there is a lot of depression isn't there there's a huge amount um i think mm. especially actually quite a lot of prevalence in younger people mm. and so yeah to to have this um ability to to connect to nature and get out into nature and and also like you said with the community aspect of it as well it's it's really almost like i don't know almost more important now than ever isn't it and, uh, and yes i think yeah. it is yeah a lot of people have said that and unfortunately the the, the problem is that waiting lists are quite long yeah. for um for appointments but then also perhaps for talking therapy type type solutions so um yeah yeah and it's um it's a longer term solution as well because um whilst antidepressants are have are very valuable you do hopefully aren't going to be on them forever so you need to put in place those elements in to your sort of lifestyle that will also support you going forward um so that you you mm. can hopefully <laughs> it's those habits isn't it whether it's a habit or not and I think I was at a gym the other day I don't go to the gym but I was walking past the gym and there was a big quote on the wall and I, for some reason it really struck me and it was motivation is what gets you started habit is what keeps you going yeah okay and it just sort of struck me you know it's the new year a lot of people are like oh I need to I need to get healthy or cut out yeah. you know alcohol or chocolate and off, inevitably you sort of do for like a few days and then you fall off the wagon and it really struck me that it's like yes the motivation is what starts you, you think oh I need to do that but it's habit you know, all those people that you hear that go for 5am runs every day, you think, how do they do it? Because <laughs> if it's their habit, <laughs> then it's like, it's built in and it's not that hard after a while. So you've got to build those habits. But um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you do. Um, <laughs> I, I ran the Paris, Paris Marathon uh, quite a few years ago now. Oh, and, wow. I, and I am, um, yeah, I, I used to be that person doing like 5am runs. <laughs> <laughs> did it ever become like a, a normal habit or was it still really hard um, every day I think well when I was training so I did probably about six months or so of training wow. and and it it becomes it becomes a bit addictive actually in yeah. all my you know it's um which I guess is also what I find about nature as well is like um in in terms of a healthy addiction it's um but you do you you, f you start to feel this sort of craving for it you notice if you haven't you know spent enough time mm. out at, in in nature and um yeah i think it's that because that's that is that is important like you know, and i think that's what's the wonderful thing about groups like yours is it gives you the motivation doesn't it and the accountability and the community yeah. to get started and and then hopefully you know whether you continue with you on a on a regular basis but you you know it it becomes more of a daily practice as well beyond just the groups as well you oh certainly yeah I can resonate to that as well um just that desire to to get out um 
but sometimes I'll, I'll notice if people are booked on a walk and perhaps the weather's looking a little bit iffy but I know in my mind that it's going to go ahead <laughs> and I might it might be somebody that's perhaps feeling a little bit nervous about it or looking for an out or perhaps yeah. not that used to going out in all weather I mean I do cancel if there's a weather warning if it's going to yeah, be unsafe yeah. obviously but and then in the yeah. winter there's a difference to having rain showers in the middle of summer when you're under a thick canopy <laughs> yeah. or in the winter so I do it's obviously more like to cancel in the winter but there's sometimes oh, I'll get messages from people oh I'm worried about the weather or I don't think I'm gonna come but no it's absolutely fine yeah. um but yeah, if it's not in their habit to get out for a walk every day, they might be thinking, oh, I just can't cope with that, which yeah, is fair enough. It's building it, up. Um, it's, it's hard. I had a, a guest just before Christmas, Helen, who does um, she does yoga outside um, up in the North Yorkshire, on the North Yorkshire coast. Oh, wow. She does sunrise yoga. And <laughs> we, we talked a lot about being prepared for the weather and dressing for for uh, different, um, you know, weathers because she does it through the winter as well. Um, Amazing. And yeah, it's it's I think when you've grown up with nature, because I was lucky enough to grow up in sort of nature and being out and about, you're sort of used to wrapping up and getting on with it. But I think um, for a lot of people, that isn't normal, is it? It's like, oh, it's raining. We just stay inside all day. And yeah, it's it's harder for them and um i think again that's why a group is important isn't it because it maybe gives you that yeah. little extra encouragement um yeah you know people will be there yeah yeah because uh, i mean <laughs> we <laughs> we do sometimes have the worst weather in winter don't we and you uh, if you didn't go out in the rain you could basically not go out for months yeah you, yeah yeah you just have to you have to find ways a couple of years ago i started doing this um challenge it's you can find it on social media um called a thousand hours outside oh wow okay. um i think it's geared more towards um families and people with kids and that, but obviously yeah. anyone can do it the idea is that over a year you spend a thousand hours outside wow. which works out as roughly i think it's two, just over like between two and two and a half hours a day yeah. um and i just felt that really a lot of people can get quite competitive about it so you <laughs> find ways to maximize your time outdoors and actually this year for the first time in a while I'm not counting every hour but it's still ingrained sort of like yeah. well we'll you know walk to the shops and make it a longer walk around the fields or we'll yeah. have a meal outdoors you know what can we take with us to maximize that outdoor time yeah. and, and you know we'll get some outdoor time every day and um it's I know that's one thing that you're quite passionate about is um sort of um encouraging young children aren't you with, with your own young children of connecting with nature and but also supporting women um sort of post or just after birth aren't you of, of mental yeah. health and yeah I'd say I'm like yeah pretty passionate about sort of perinatal mental health which is the whole sort of period around pregnancy and after birth and that's I mean I'm passionate about mental health for everyone really I suppose it was just a couple of years ago I was in that group and met so many people that um, who perhaps had never had any mental health um, concerns in their life before and then suddenly they were thrown into a very different um, experience of having a baby and um, yeah many people who really struggle with that in a lot of different ways and I think still there's there is a lot of support out there but yeah. it also can be a very lonely time or you've lost um your life that you had before perhaps you were really sporty or you were really doing a lot of time outdoors and then suddenly you can still do things but it's in a different way and there's different priorities and yeah I actually started up a walking group when I had my first baby because because of that I just missed I missed doing the kind of bird watching type nature nature um, reserve visits um, and my son just <laughs> didn't want to be indoors at all he pretty much screamed when we were indoors so I I had him in a sling outdoors kind of all the time and I was like well I want to find other people that want to do this with me <laughs> um and I was sort of didn't quite fit into the other baby groups where it was a lot of sitting around in cafes because he would just scream <laughs> so I started um wildlife walks so I'd, I'd and it would give me a chance to kind of do a recce and plan the walk so that other people that were more nervous would know that I'd sort of planned it out um yeah that was great and then I found it was only meant to be something to kind of help me find my tribe really find some other like-minded people 
but it but I found some of the stories people shared you know more so when you're walking side by side with a beautiful view rather than if you're sat in a cafe opposite somebody some of the things that people opened up about what they they were struggling with at the time was was quite um moving and eye-opening really and found that that was a really lovely safe space for people to come and quite healing nature yeah. really I think um so. I know I, I've sort of looked into like trauma treatments and things and and actually movement is is quite important for processing a sort of the trauma that you hold in mm. the body and mm. so I do think yeah that and, and I know for myself like when I'm walking in nature with my partner I, we probably we talk about just um, you know quite a lot of stuff that we probably wouldn't talk about if we were just you know sitting at home or um mm. you know in that in or like you said sitting with friends in the coffee shop like you just that that sort of action of movement and and being in nature just it does open open up opportunities for like you said it's just it just feels it feels safer doesn't it it feels supportive and just allows you to sort of access these sort of deeper deeper levels I think um mm. yeah I think so I yeah. did I was quite surprised because when I did my forest bathing training as I said I came from more of a um, conservation wildlife background whereas most of the other people on the course were therapists who wanted okay. to take their practice outdoors yeah so they were already practicing kind of yeah therapy with clients and wanted to bring it outdoors and that's sort of shown me how the practice of forest bathing can be a really sort of therapeutic um, activity whether it's one-on-one or sometimes in a group and some people do find it quite an emotional experience and it's not something I I, it's not something I sort of do intentionally like you know with a group like right I want everyone to feel really (laughs) super emotional but it's something I'm quite aware of now and I often might say say that at the beginning of a, a session because say you're you know most of us have got busy lives and 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 various things going on um under the surface and for some people they might not have been asked to or might not have had an opportunity to stop take some deep breaths and just try and relax for a moment and I often find some people find that suddenly those when they do stop and they've been they've been invited to slow down in a lovely group environment suddenly they feel a little bit overwhelmed with emotion yeah so um yeah it's sort of treading that path and being aware of what people might be bringing bringing to the session or they might might have without really giving it some deep thought booked it in because they're they're battling something and that's sort of their time to confront it really yeah um so usually it's a really beautiful group experience but you just do just have to be aware some people might be in a very a little bit of a vulnerable state and um yeah I'm not I'm not a trained counsellor I've done some mental health first aid but just trying to encourage them really that that it's a safe space and that you know yeah nature is kind of there for them but um yeah it's often the place to confront those thoughts or feelings yeah yeah I think it's um I mean it comes it comes back to your like women who've just had um children as well isn't it it's, sometimes we go through like these huge life changes and sort of society also tells tells you that it should be the happiest time of your life as well don't they like, mm, yeah you know, and and then it's, you feel a bit of a stigma don't you of like you know mm. you, you should be having the most amazing experience and actually it's a bit tough and challenging yeah. and yeah, yeah. It's, and I think it's it's very important that 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 message gets out to to people to you know it, it's okay to be struggling um, yeah and to you know that to reach out and, and ask for help and not to have you know feel any shame or embarrassment around that yeah um, yeah yeah couldn't agree more yeah yeah and then um, so your your own two children I'm sure they've inspired you to explore ways to to encourage <laughs> their their con- connection with nature um <laughs> yeah yeah all the time actually last night we were um there was about 15 minutes till bed or bath time and uh, I said to them right you've got 15 minutes they were watching some telly so, so you've got a choice you can either carry on watching tv or play a game or something 
and but while we've been having dinner we've been looking out I don't know if you've seen the moon last night it was really lovely and um, so my five-year-old said I want to go on a night walk <laughs> and I was like and part of me was like oh I wasn't prepared for this it's you know just clearing up and it's time but I was like no it's a beautiful night yes yeah. of course and we'd been on one you know, when when the stars were out a couple of weeks ago and taking the telescope out so I was like yes okay instead of staying in and playing a game or watching telly we'll go and what, look at the star through the telescope we're really lucky we're north dorset it's a kind of a particular dark sky area so you just get away from the street lights of our road onto yeah. the field and wow it's incredible um so yeah we did we did that oh um, brilliant oh amazing I just That's hope good. they kind of hold on to it as they grow up because little you know children children don't need any encouragement if you go to a word to or anywhere really to <laughs> climb on things and smell things and touch things and yeah you know get stuck in which as adults we don't do as much um, <laughs> which I like to try and encourage people to do but um yeah, yeah so I just hope they yeah they that... keep that going into their teenage years <laughs> Yeah, I think it's well. Hopefully, they um, they at least know that nature is um a place that they can find support, like you, mm. like you did in your own teenage years, and by having built that connection as when they were so young and and experiencing it, that they do have that to fall back on. Yeah, yeah, and I suppose the foundations are there, and and I and they they do mine do quite like being outdoors. We went to London recently on the train, and as we left. <laughs> He said, well, I like London, but actually I prefer trees and nature. So I was like, yes, <laughs> thank goodness, that's good, because we're not going to be going to London very often. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think it's really important, especially with, with children, to, to let them just be outdoors. And it doesn't yeah. have to, you don't always have to be, you know, taking them to an expensive kind of uh, adventure park outside, you know, just being outside, whether it's in the woods or in a garden and you know, have some ideas of activities possibly but let them explore and let them come up with things and let them react to what they nature. find I react guess, is, yeah. yeah find their own way yeah um yeah yeah there's, I'd love to actually um do more with children people often ask me if I do events for children and I'm like no this is my opportunity to be with <laughs> adults and be really calm but like you say I think anxiety and in in children is becoming more of a more of a problem it's pretty huge and it'd be lovely to I'd like to learn more about ways we can support children to have those techniques and I, I hear that they're they're doing it in schools and they they do sort of breathing techniques and yeah. it's really lovely um I think that's very yeah important. I think it is important I think um it's it's great that things like the forest bathing uh, are you know have got the scientific um background behind it because then it's it's much mm. easier to get it integrated into the sort of the mainstream isn't it that you know the schools and education and and um even like the medical side like you said with the green prescriptions and things um it's harder for for people to resist <laughs> when you yeah, when you yeah. can say actually these are the list of of benefits um because i think uh it's it re what is it reduces your cortisol levels doesn't it is that it's um yeah, yeah yeah um yeah there's there's so many benefits I mean the actually when the Japanese did the research um in the late 70s 80s and sort of coined the phrase forest bathing they found a whole range of things they tested a lot of things and one of the main discoveries they made was um the sort of boost to your immune system of forest okay. bathing so they found that basically trees give off essential oils that are called phytoncides and they, they help the trees fight off infection. But during a period of forest bathing, we breathe them in and oh. it helps us as well. We fight infection. So oh, wow. um, and those levels go quite high and stay quite high in your body for quite a long period of time afterwards. So it really is a big impact. But yeah, they found it improves um, sleep for people who are. Um, struggling with insomnia, um, re reduces feelings of depression, reduces blood pressure, um, reducing stress levels. Um, yeah, absolutely, lots of benefits. And it, um, it even improves memory as well, if I if um, if I remember correctly, <laughs> doesn't it? it? Improves your memory yeah. and and concentration and yeah, just 
I mean, it's just, it's fascinating. I mean, what you're saying about like, you know, improving your immune system and like the, it's, that's just incredible. <laughs> yeah. And we're still learning a lot more, aren't we, about, you know, having your hands in soil and things like that. There was a study, um, I think it was with kids' nurseries and one was all sort of concrete outside and the other was, was soil. So the kids were sort of touching soil every day. And that was, again, I'm afraid I can't remember the exact results, but they were quite um, a big difference in terms of their children's immune system. Oh, wow. um, yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I can't, during this, over the winter, you do, yeah, if you've got young kids, you inevitably get lots of um, <laughs> viruses and colds and coughs and things. Just anecdotally, I'm pretty sure over the last few years when I've been doing a lot more um, concentrated sort of forest bathing type activities and time outside, I'm sure I've been a bit healthier. But yeah, maybe I'm just imagining that. Yeah, no, but it's I I think um, I think sometimes you even if you get something, you you sort of bounce back quicker as well, don't you? There's sort mm. of a, a greater um, resilience. Mm. Like you, you know you sort of you don't doesn't necessarily take you down for quite so long um but yeah it's I mean I it's also hard isn't it if you're not feeling very well like you don't want to do anything but actually yeah if you can yeah. sort of drag yourself out of your sick bed and um, obviously oh yeah totally safely, not, yeah. not around other people <laughs> but um you know that it just like you said just sort of walk out in your garden and get a bit of fresh air and sort of speak yeah. to a couple of plants and things it it does help doesn't it um, it does and I found that I'm really good at sort of um giving all this sort of advice not advice but you know um talking about the benefits and that's all and the benefits to your mental health and that's all very well when you're when you're feeling really well um but it's yeah those times when you're feeling really low that actually it's it's not that easy and you know and I'm very aware of that this is what we're talking about is as I said sort of mild to moderate feelings of anxiety and depression but um some, I certainly don't want to come across as as someone who's sort of like, oh, we'll just you know go and sit by a tree and all your problems will disappear. But um, I have tried to practice what I preach. You know, sometime recently, yeah, I was feeling I'd, I had a bit of a cold and I was feeling a bit low mentally, and I could have easily spent all day at home. But like, no, I'm, I forced myself out, even just for a short walk, yeah. and and it was the day when. I saw um, my first snowdrop, so there's always oh. something out there, a little, a little gift yeah. to be offered. But yeah, I know for some people it is just even getting out of the door on some days is a real struggle. But um, yeah. on those days, you know, even the science shows that even looking at green imagery, um, yeah. so whether that's on a screen or in a book or looking at old photos of when you've places that you've visited will do something in the brain to kind of boost um to give you a boost um but it could be also something like re-watching those you know make your favorite David Attenborough series and reminding yourself of some of the facts on there and, and that yeah. still gives you that inspiration yeah I think um it is I mean depression is is really challenging and you know there's it it is really hot like for someone who's who's really struggling with it um it is very difficult to find any motivation and um but like you say just even if it's just looking looking out of your window even opening the window when you when yeah. you look out of it just to yeah. sort of feel you know the the air on your face and things or, yeah. or stepping outside your front door and even if it's not going beyond yeah the, the boundary of your your garden and things but yeah, I think I loved what you were saying about the little snowdrop there as well. And that's what's lovely as well, isn't it? Is like over time, you know, if, you, if you've got a nice walk that you do and you see it change through the seasons and, you know, you, you notice yeah. all these little sort of indicators are oh, the first snowdrop or yeah. you know, the bluebells or the first leaves, the buds on the trees or, um, you know, the but different birds at different times of year. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'd really encourage people to if they've got a local walk or a local spot they can visit and notice those changes. The um weekly wellbeing walk I've been doing, um, it's been running for just over a year now. So we're starting to remember what was happening this time last year and then looking forward to spring and it's like, oh, just under that tree was where we saw that little purple violet come up. <laughs> I wonder if it'll be there again. Um, yeah, things yeah. like that give a real a real boost, I find. 
I think they give you um, a sense of connection, don't they, to something bigger than yourself. And mm. yeah, and that I think that also helps. It feels like, I guess it comes back to community again, doesn't it? But it's the mm. sort of, you know, the non-human community that you're actually a part of, um, whether it's the, whether it's your birds in, in your garden or, or out in the, you know, where you're walking or the trees and, you know, they're sort of a familiarity. Yeah. Yeah, I think trees give a great sense of perspective. I've heard people talk about kind of tree time as opposed to human time, you know. <laughs> we just see them in a snapshot, but you know that most of them will be around for so much longer than us. But also it's that some people feel really drawn to nature naturally um, and others don't notice it quite so much. But we are all, you know, we are nature. We're all natural beings and our ancestors kind of walked this land and um, you know, we're surrounded by green, if we're, if we're talking kind of a really long time ago. Um, you know, they were very much more connected to the land than we are now. Um, so I, I feel that that's sort of in all of us, really, that desire. Yeah. Um, I, I think there's some sort of link there in terms of it's not surprising that if you look at a completely green natural scene, you find it more calming than if you look at a grey concrete cityscape that's not really surprising but I um I think that might you know go back to you know our ancestors would be surrounded by green and when the, and green means life and we know that the sound of running water is one of the most calming frequencies but obviously if you're looking for water and then hear that noise it's going to help yeah. make you feel calm because yeah. it means it means water but yeah yeah, yeah and it's a uh, sort of it comes back to sort of innate survival doesn't it of mm. um you know you, you need water to survive so yeah, yeah. It may, like you say it makes sense that like you you would find being near water reassuring because you yes yeah yeah I think yeah whether you um, feel that or not it's definitely yeah water I think everyone finds being by a body of water relaxing whether it's the sea or lake or river um yeah so that can be a really really powerful sort of environment so um i mean obviously it'd be it'd be great if anyone um sort of in the uk who's local gets an opportunity to come and join you but if there's anyone further afield listening have you got any um tips for sort of what they could do to just um sort of deepen their connection and, and sort of explore a little bit of forest bathing on their own yeah of course it sounds really simple um and it is simple really so um one of the first things I'd suggest to do is, is find a place that you, you want to visit, ideally a woodland or somewhere where there's some trees. Um, it could be a regular walk or it could be next to a river, but find a sit spot. So that's literally a spot that you can sit down in. So um, if you go on a walk, if it's, you know, you might want to take a little mat to sit on or just a plastic bag or something, find a spot that you feel comfortable Um there's no point doing it if you know you're, you're going to feel really self-conscious and nervous so it could be that you're hidden away in the undergrowth really away from the path if you're comfortable doing that or it could just be you know down next to a river um and just sit and see what happens so it might feel uncomfortable if you're not used to slowing down um, you might just want to start by giving yourself five minutes and just sit there and I always say if you sit for long enough something magical will happen and on our walks so I've had someone have a mouse run out <laughs> near, <laughs> near them um yeah something will happen well it might not be you know an incredible nature moment of you know dragonfly landing on a branch <laughs> or something but it, it could just be a thought or a leaf falling or the way the light the light shifts but um like you said before it is addictive because when you when you take time out you've sort of got to be there for, for things to happen so whether it's a, an amazing nature spectacle or just you know a little moment of clarity so I, one of my strongest nature memories I often ask people actually what their if they've got a happy nature memory and one of my strongest is I'm not sure I was probably about 14 or something and we had water meadows and fields behind the house and I, I was feeling grumpy and I wanted to go off and be on my own and I knew that on the river there were water bowls because people always talked about them. And I thought, I want to see a water bowl. So I went and sat down by the river. I walked along until I saw a little hole and I sat down and I stared at the hole. And it must have only been about 10, 15 minutes. 
a water bowl plopped out, <laughs> plopped into the water and went swimming along. And I was, I mean, I was almost in tears. I was, you know, yeah. I was pretty emotional. But um, just the fact that I had had that, and I looked around and there was nobody there. It was just <laughs> me and this water bowl. And I just have kept that forever. But, um, you know, sit down quietly in nature yeah. for five minutes, um, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour is better. But that's a good way to start. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that sounds that sounds amazing. It sounds beautiful. Um, and that well, it sounds like a lovely place to start to wrap up there. Yeah. Lindsay. But um, is there anything else that you you feel is on your heart that you'd like to share with with people today? Um, I think we've sort of covered it really. But yeah, just to reiterate that um, that nature's there for everyone, but it's you know open to everyone. Sometimes people feel um uncomfortable visiting nature reserves or think you know it's yeah. it's for sort of I see you know when I've had birders my binoculars with binoculars, like, binoculars. <laughs> with binoculars I'm going yeah. back to you people say oh well I'm not an expert but are you looking at anything interesting it's like it's nature everyone can look at it and I want to help you see it so um yeah I think yeah um, get I think that's in. that's what I find that is actually um generally people are quite a friendly lot and actually yeah. like you know, I often see, you know, if I see someone else with binoculars, I'll be like, oh, have you seen anything today? And, you know, yes. and, and it's it's just, yeah, it's just having, but I think people, if they're, if they're not used to that environment, it's it can be a little bit yeah. intimidating, but actually not to worry about it and just to, you know, people are quite happy to share. I mean, I'm almost probably excited to, <laughs> to oh, come yeah, across definitely. someone else who's interested yeah. and, yeah, well, happily happily share with you so. have you ever f seen something amazing and then been desperate to share it with other people yeah. <laughs> like we saw an otter um I've only seen an otter sort of handful of times in my life but last summer we were watching an otter and then people were walking past in the path and not noticing so I was like flagging them down yeah. saying have you seen this otter and most were really excited there was some like, why are you telling me this yeah <laughs> I'm just yeah. want to go on my way but yeah yeah, yeah. Nature's, nature's for everyone I think that's the yeah. that's the thing really yeah. and that if you are if you've got you know um big questions on your mind or thoughts um there's a thing in forest bathing called a, a medicine walk and um it all sounds very serious you know you can go off with that intention in your mind but I think just day to day whether it's you know a question or a worry or something it doesn't have to be um a big sort of day-long trek but if you go out into somewhere somewhere beautiful in nature and with that thought on your mind um you may find that you get a bit of clarity or yeah. a bit of a bit of a sign <laughs> yeah that's yeah that's that's beautiful that is just um when you if you're feeling weighed down by sort of any decisions or anything in life that it it's a way of you sort of you, you lighten the load but and then you can yeah. almost you get some clarity don't you of actually what what could help um, yeah I think so yeah yeah oh well brilliant well thank you so much Lindsay it's been just an thank absolute you. pleasure thank you it's been lovely yeah you're welcome thank you so much for listening to the Nurtured by Nature podcast I truly hope this conversation has brought some hope and inspiration into your life I would love to have these messages ripple out across the world so if you can please share this episode with your friends Leave a review on your favourite podcast player and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. I would love to hear from you, so please feel free to connect with me on the links provided in the podcast description. But most importantly, thank you so much for being a part of this journey with me. But don't forget to simply get out there and enjoy the natural world. <laughs>